I saw this story in the Daily Mail. Chris Cuomo dramatically reveals he was going to, quote, kill everybody, including myself, after he was fired from CNN. Things can consume you. He says, I had to accept the CNN termination because I was going to kill everybody, including myself. <laughs> Things can consume you. Now, the first thing. <laughs> He's going to throw everybody down a flight of stairs. <laughs> well, so look, look. My first assumption is. He's just, it's a turn of phrase. He means like, oh, you know, I'm going to show them. He's not literally saying it. But then when he said, including myself, <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's actually talking about seriously hurting people because he got fired. Right. Jimmy is just laughing. <laughs> I remember when Chris came out of the basement when they said, yeah! I've been, and his son, and he starts lying. He's like, I haven't even left the house in however long. And his son's like watching him lie right in front of his face. I would imagine that would make someone depressed to, to have to lie in front of your son. So Tim, if you or I launched a news report as fallacious as Chris Cuomo's basement exit, we would be laughed out of the business forever. Like we, yep. that, That's the thing people pretend you and I do. And that's the stuff that CNN actually does on the regular. He did a complete fake phony thing that he was staying in his basement because of COVID. It turned out he was out of his house all the time. He got into a fight with some guy out in, on his front lawn. At and a different then, property. Yeah, at a different property. And then he, when he comes out of the basement, his family's sitting around there going, yeah, they're, they're all going <laughs> along with the lie as if he just came out for the first time. It gets revealed that's a lie. They never, it's nothing. Nothing like a blip. It's like a it's like a chemical fire in uh, Palestine, Ohio. Nobody knows about it. That's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the Palestinians. They, they tend to get a bad rest. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The nation's best the kept secret. Pa Palestinians. Palestinians, I guess you would call. Uh, yeah, and it, honestly, that Chris Cuomo video. Everyone should check that out again for reference at some point because you got to see his son's face while he's his lying. His son knows he's lying. His son knows he's lying on television, and to do that to your kid. Right, that's a that's child abuse. That's psychological torture to that kid. And now his kid knows the news is fake. Everything's yeah. fake. He said his kids call him fake news. Ah. Remember, he told that story. I'm pretty sure it was him. He said his kids would would make fun of him, call him fake news when they were mad at him. So how come he didn't get fired for that? That's the weirdest well, thing. Well, like, hold on, because that's CNN's mo. That's right. You know, he was doing what he was supposed that's to do. Right. He yeah, was, it's, he was creating drama, and that's what they do at CNN. It's not a news show; it's look, a drama show. Zucker was running the show, and he's the Apprentice guy. He's the NBC reality TV show guy. So CNN Hunter. starts falling apart, uh -huh. and they say, "Let's bring in the uh, reality TV show style stuff and do that instead." Now it's funny to see Chris Cuomo losing his mind and to see how deranged he he is and was. Now you got the story about Don Lemon. But um, isn't it comforting, Tim, to know that guy's like? Uh, Cuomo, Chris Cuomo are barely keeping it together. <laughs> that they're suffering. Isn't that that they're thinking about, I haven't thought about uh, killing myself and lately about, and everybody no, else. No, he, Right? I don't know. I, no, I think it's a bad thing. If I, think been, I think it's a bad thing, but he's an evil guy. If he'd been put through it and came out and was like, what have I done? I want to die. That's different than actively lying and then now I understand why he would feel that way because yeah, he's, he's like, He's it's using shame. Well, this doesn't feel like, like sadness. It feels like anger, right? Yes. Like this shouldn't have been done to me. Yes. Well, well, and it's like exactly if you saw any high school shooter manifesto and they're like, this kid said he wanted to shoot everyone and himself. They'd be like, lock that kid up immediately, right? Well, well, you guys ever uh, on Futurama, Bender is depressed and he's like, oh, I'm so depressed. I wish everyone else was dead. <laughs> yeah. it's that, that's the mentality yeah. that his life falls apart and he is of that psychotic mindset where it's kind of a shocking uh, revelation to admit. So, you know, props right. to him. But yeah. I think what you see here is the kind of personality that is required to get jobs at these companies. Because what I want to say about CNN, it's not uh, like YouTube. He, let, let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, me and Jimmy. We make YouTube channels. We do the grind. We do the work. We make the channel. And then people come and eventually gather around you, build an audience. CNN is an ivory tower. And to open the door, there is a Lord who says, you will do as you're told. And mm -hmm. the guy says, I will say and do anything if you let me climb to the top of this tower. That's the kind of person CNN attracts. Psychopathic narcissists who then talk about how they wanted to hurt other people because they <laughs> lost their keys to the ivory tower. Right. And nothing will happen <laughs> He's just to laughing him. every yes, time he hits right. You think right? they do it incrementally? Like, well, take I'm your glad shoes off before anybody. you come in. And then they're like, now take your pants off before you go to the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> now your shirt. Take it all off. Or... But then yeah, when they, the higher they get CNN. up, but then the higher they get up in the ivory tower, they're like, oh, I deserve to be yes. here. Like, I deserve that show. I should be able to punish people around me who took my job away from me. It's it's such so they, a strange way to behave. They did a study 
uh, and I'm going to butcher it, but basically the, the, the end of the study was, the conclusion was they gave people, like they were playing Monopoly and they gave somebody way more money to start with. And then even if that person won at the end, they thought they deserved to win. They thought they did play better. Yeah. Even though, did you have you heard about that yeah, study? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So that's what you're. That's what you kind of talking about. So if you get that job in corporate media and you ascend to the to, to the height of it, you think that you earned it and you deserve it. What it what it really indicates is that you're the you're the perfect tool to serve the oligarchy, mm-hmm. and that's who gets promoted in that. Because if you go against them, you get fired, like Phil Donahue when he's they fired him when he was against the Iraq War. He had the number one show on MSNBC, and they fired him, and they said it was because of low ratings. He had the highest rated show at the time on the network and then a memo came out that got released right leaked and it said because he was anti-war and that was bad for our advertising wow did, bill did, maher did, also yeah i was gonna it. say what did, happened with bill though how did he claw his way back in because he has oh, so here's the story i heard i don't know if it's true the story i heard was that his manager also did a sopranos so hbo wanted sopranos and his manager being a good manager strong-armed them and said well you got to take bill too and so that's how that's wow. what I heard. I don't know if that's 100 percent true or 50. That's the story I heard in Hollywood. Yeah, Bill. Uh, what was it? He, he on politically incorrect. He criticized the uh, Iraq and Afga- Af- Afghanistan war. So what he said was that the terrorists who flew the, bil- the planes into the buildings on 9-11 were not cowards. And you couldn't say that. He said, what? well, they didn't. They weren't cowards. They, they killed. They risked their own life to do this thing they believed in. They weren't cowards. You can't say that. That's crazy. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I mean, that's that's the old school cancel culture that the corporate yeah. overlords demanded you fall in line or else. That's right. And now they have a harder time with that. So now they go the censorship route and they try and block you from the back end. So exactly. This isn't the first time that they've been afraid. You know, newspapers were afraid of television news. Right. And they try to demonize television news as radicalizing people, which is exactly what happened. So when shows like yours and mine and others become popular and we get audiences on YouTube, well, we're stealing their audience from the New York Times, CNN and the Washington Post. And so then they start to write. That's how the adpocalypse all started. Yep. They started. They noticed that they were losing their audience to people like us. So they write these crazy hit pieces that say that YouTube is radicalizing children to be Nazis and pedophiles and white supremacists and right wingers mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And people are like, oh, and, and that's why all of a sudden overnight they dropped all their advertising on YouTube. Yeah. Overnight that happened. And that's and why did they do that? Because we're actually a threat to them. And so now we have all these rules of how we can talk and how we'll and it's the, you know, the old saying is who you can't criticize rules over you. Well, we can't criticize the COVID narrative in the way it deserves to be on YouTube and who owns that that's big pharma so you yeah. can't create big pharma has captured the fda big pharma has captured the cdc but uh, fauci is is a psychopathological liar and criminally corrupt that's why he's been able to have that job for 43 years and he's the highest paid person in government he makes almost a half a million dollars a year in government Do you know how much money that is that's like 10 grand a week they pay him that's 40 grand a month remember when the left was concerned about massive multinational corporations like Big Pharma and would call out Big Pharma specifically for like, I don't know, the fines they've had to pay over the criminal actions they've taken. But now for some reason, you know where I'm going with this. Yes. What what happened? So people who have- New young people came up in allegiance? These people who I know all my life who are supposed to be critical and skeptical of big business and Big Pharma and the military, they have- uh, they have question authority bumper stickers and then they shame you if you question the authority yeah. on COVID. It's, it's like, you, what, what is going on? People who still think that we haven't landed on the moon don't want you to question the COVID narrative. Mm-hmm. It's the craziest thing. I don't know what happened, but the, everybody I know who were the biggest cynics, comedians, they lost their cynicism. They lost their, their healthy sense of skepticism about people who we've always known were the biggest corrupt criminals in the world, Tim. You know that. I mean, when I say criminals, I mean, did they put asbestos in baby powder? and then sell it to poor people after they got fired. Yes, that's the kind of shit they did. I mean, they put AIDS-tainted <laughs> stuff in blood and sent it to poor countries. Bayer. for Yes, they did. They gave people AIDS. Did they, did they give sell you heart medicine they knew was going to give you a heart attack? Mm-hmm. Yes, they knew it, and they did it anyways. So what would be any different than now? It turns out, fucking nothing, except they... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Effing like, nothing, but they have more control of the media. How much has... A, they made $100 billion off of COVID... That's it. One, one company, Pfizer, made $100 billion yeah. off of COVID. Do you know how much the entire recorded music industry makes in the United States? $12 billion a year. $12 billion. Every, every record, everything. 
That's how much they made off of one COVID. So do you, you know what kind of power that gives you? That gives you the power to buy every person in the media, which they did. They And they bought everybody in the government, which they did. They just got in California, which is super majority Democrat with a Democrat governor. They passed a law telling doctors they're not allowed to practice medicine that goes against what Big Pharma says when it, when it comes to COVID. And if they do, they're going to get fined. That's what they're, So they're taking the ability to practice medicine away from doctors because they're so corrupt. Corrupted. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's the end of the show, everyone. Thanks for coming. That's just the beginning. We've, that's been, just the beginning. we've been lied what to about fuck? COVID on a scale that our brains can't even comprehend. And people are just now starting to comprehend. Well, let's, let's talk about the media. So I, I, I hate to actually talk about some of these people because they don't deserve the attention. But you worked with the Young Turks for a long time. And uh, I've, I've known them for a bit. And the interesting thing is that it's not just the corporate press that we, we've we seen oh. all of a sudden. Look, we, we know that everything's brought to you by Pfizer. We know the unholy satanic dancing or whatever performance was brought to you by Pfizer. <laughs> yes. We know that all these talk shows are brought to you by Pfizer. Yes. I get it. But what happened to independent media outlets like the Young Turks where all of a sudden they went from being the counterculture to towing the line for the establishment? I just think Trump happened and so they became you're either with us or against us. And they were they didn't want to be on the outside. It's cult thinking now to be a Democrat and a Democratic voter. It's a cult thinking like right now. Um, yeah. Now, I, I, I criticize the Democrats because I was a Democrat my whole life up until 2016 when they cheated Bernie in the primary. And then Bernie didn't make him pay a price for it. And not, not only that, he didn't make him reform. Right. They still have super delegates. They still take corporate money. They still do all that stuff that screwed him. And he'll never use his leverage. to. So I stopped being a Democrat. And so it's very cult, cult like thinking. People are afraid to push back and have a different thought. And if you do, it's like, you're oh, you're one of them. So everything you're either with us or against us is very tribal thinking. And it leads to the country we have where half the country can't afford a $500 emergency and people are living under every bridge. And we still are told to hate our neighbor. Mm -hmm. We're told that our neighbor is the cause of our problem. Even though the establishment did a controlled demolition of our economy, which crushed everybody except for a handful of millionaires, and they want me to be angry because of the pain I'm feeling, but I'm gonna be angry at my neighbor because he wouldn't take a vaccine that didn't work the way they said it did in the first place and so i'm not going to blame my neighbor for that what i'm going to do is love my neighbor and i'm going to find common ground with my neighbor because we have it and that's what scares the hell out of the oligarchy is that if we don't come if we come together and realize we have a common enemy what's like what we're going to do on sunday at this anti-war rally people of all political stripes are coming together to oppose the military industrial complex which has been fleecing this country for at least the last 30 years what what is this rally uh Specifically, is it about Ukraine and, and or what? And let me just say for YouTube, the vaccine is safe and effective, and it certainly does stop and slow the transmission and contraction. It will keep you from getting seriously ill or hospitalized. And talk to a doctor about and what's talk right to for a doctor you. Doctor about what's sponsored by. My, <laughs> <laughs> fill in the blank. No, no, no. In all, in all seriousness, talk to a doctor. You know, and my, you know, the vaccine is so good, my heart swells with pride. You got the vaccine <laughs> with pride, yes. And you got it. You told me you got injured. Uh, I did. I did get a vaccine injury, and that—that's what led to me becoming uh, that. Like, woke you up or whatever. Are you public mm -hmm. about? Have you been public about the whole process and like what oh, happened? Oh, the whole everything? thing. Yeah, I talked all about it. What happened? And so I just got sick, and I couldn't get better. Uh, I had. Uh, why don't Why don't we Why don't we talk about this? Uh, on the, on the later. We'll go deep yeah. on it. Yeah, we go deep later. Uh, we'll go deep on this we'll one because on I that. think if I, I think much to the point of many people, but I think if we really want to go crank it up to eleven. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk over at okay. TimCast.com, become a member. Let's do that. And uh, for now, I think that story in and of itself is interesting. So we'll, we'll, we'll cruise back to uh, uh, 30,000 feet, and I'll ask you, this is what snapped you out of it or like made you realize the media is lying or, or what? Uh, you mean about COVID? You wanna... Well, like, you know, what, so was, your, what you were... was your moment where you were like, holy crap, these people are full of it? Uh, well, I mean, you probably always felt I've that always about the corporate felt, press. So I've always felt that about the corporate press, but then I didn't understand was what happened with Trump is that people like, um, and, you know, and it wasn't just TYT, but I, that, that was the people I, were, I was a part of, right? And they just became the opposite of what they're supposed to be, right? They're supposed to push back against the corporate narrative, even when it, you know, if it's somebody that they hate against Trump, you're supposed to tell the truth and they wouldn't do it. And they just kept repeating CIA and FBI talking points about everything, including Julian Assange, which was disgusting. As they were, you know, I'm debunking the bullshit articles about Julian Assange and Paul Manafort visiting him at the embassy in London, yeah. even though they don't have any pictures of it. I'm but, debunking that in their studio. They come on after me and they push that story. So, so 
you're at the Young Turks and you're like, this is a lie. This and is then 100%. 20 minutes later, they're like, actually, it's true. No, and this is 100% true. I know, but I couldn't, my jaw was on the floor when they did that. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.